uh, before. Okay. Uh, and all these things apply to the study of uh, dissipative systems, for example, diffusion phenomena. Uh, also some uh, non-variational equations, like in the contact mechanics, uh, some inclusion, monotone inclusion situation. So it's widely applied in, in uh, really uh, uh, various fields of mathematics and uh, applied mathematics, physics, etc. Okay, now in, uh, in uh, 2012, uh, Wolfgang Arendt and Elst studied or identified a kind of structure which is similar to this uh, gradient uh, system. They called it G gradient uh, by studying uh, uh, a problem of uh, Dirichlet to normal map. Uh, and this study was uh, deepened and followed by uh, Ralph Schill, Daniel Ower, and James Kennedy in uh, 1215. And this uh, structure is uh, very promising to deal with problems, like I said, uh, which are uh, degenerate parabolic equations, for example. So let uh, be given, let, let H be a Hilbert space. And now let G be a map from V to H, which is not injective and even not bounded. So in, in the, the standard uh, case of gradient system, uh, G is the median of V in H. Here G is uh, a map which is uh, quite general. Then you can define, uh, I want to hide a part of my screen because I don't see, or, ah, okay. So you can define a G subgradient, which is a, a subdifferential here that I did not with, uh, with G, or phi. Phi is the energy from V into R bar. And this subdifferential is uh, the set of couples UF in H times H such that there exists u hat in the domain of phi with a g of u hat equal u and the gato differential of phi is given by f so here in this case it's not uh, uh, the uh, phi is not necessarily uh, uh, gato differentiable but when it is the case you have this definition, which is the classical definition of the Gato differential. And what you can see here is that it, what, what come into play is the existence of two spaces. The space V of uh, uh, the, the energy space, let's say, and the space H where the dynamic will take uh, place. So this is the difference, the main difference with the standard gradient theory. You have two space which comes into play. And by this definition of the G subgradient, from the definition, since uh, phi is convex, lower summit continuous and ghetto differentiable, you can prove that this uh, G subdifferential is in fact maximal cyclically monotone, which means monotone in, in fact, uh, operator, and more precisely, there exists an energy that I will denote phi H from H to R bar, such that uh, the, the, the G subdifferential is included in the dif dif subdifferential of phi H. And the domain of uh, this subdifferential is the range of G. With these abstract properties, you have an important uh, consequence, which is that now the problem of minimizing over uh, the space V, the energy uh, phi, will take the form of an abstract gradient system on H. And this uh, abstract uh, gradient system is what is called the G gradient system, because this subdifferential is the subdifferential with respect to G. And you have now a form which allows you 
more or less to use all the standard theory. In fact, not completely. One should prove that uh, it applies, but anyway, you have this ab abstract uh, representation and the theory of gradient uh, system extends uh, even though the energy phi h is mostly implicit. What I say, I said here is that there exists an energy, but mostly we are not able to write it explicitly on the space H. Okay, so uh, instead of, uh, of uh, uh, expanding uh, how to obtain these results, which are uh, which can be found uh, notably in the paper by uh, Ralph, uh, Daniel Ower, and um, and Kennedy, I will show you how it works now and why it is important to identify such structure when you want to solve an evolution problem. So the illustration is on electroporation problem. Uh, this problem occurs in uh, cell biology. So you have cell, which is a, a medium, uh, which is divided into two parts inside the cell, which is uh, uh, the, 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 uh, a part of this medium and outside and bet between the two uh, uh, media, you have a layer a lipidic layer, which is a membrane, which organize the exchanges between what is out and what is in the cell. So usually if you have a difference, a difference of potential between the inside and the outside of the cell, then you have current, for example, unique current, which uh, take place and this uh, membrane in a, a mechanism that I will not be able to explain, will open some gates to allow these ions to enter the cell or to, uh, to, uh, to leave uh, the cell. So the idea in gene therapy and in electroporation is to say, okay, if we apply some uh, uh, difference of potential like in this, uh, uh, in this image, then we will be able to modify the properties, the electrical properties of the membrane in a way to, uh, to open some gates and to let some drugs or biomolecules enter inside the cell. So uh, I think that the applications of this, uh, this uh, kind of uh, process are uh, obvious and uh, very important uh, in uh, medical uh, applications and in uh, uh, in cell uh, in the uh, cell biology. So here you have uh, uh, some examples uh, on how this uh, this uh, uh, routines work. So you have a biological cell. You apply a difference of uh, potential. And then you change the, 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 the resistivity, the nature of this, uh, this, uh, this membrane, which allows you to enter things or uh, to, to, uh, to let them uh, out. And uh, even there are other applications where you can uh, uh, kill uh, completely the cell. One can think about uh, concerts and uh, applications like this. Uh, okay, so there are uh, a lot of uh, uh, practical and uh, important applications to this theory, to this uh, practice. Now, what is the mathematical uh, uh, translation of this uh, uh, process? So a phenomenological model was written uh, very early by assuming a special geometry of the cell applying this uh, difference of potential and trying to deduce how things uh, works. And uh, in uh, uh, 99, De Bruyne and uh, Krasowska in uh, several papers proposed the model. Uh, so this model is a, a micro model, but uh, by homogenization, they obtained also a macro model. 
And this model reads uh, very simply uh, uh, as follows. You have uh, uh, a transmembrane current, uh, EM, uh, IM, which is the derivative of the potential at the membrane plus some existing uh, current. The usual one is uh, the, the ion current, which is existing independently of uh, any uh, human uh, intervention. And this electroporation current, which comes from the fact that uh, we, we apply uh, some uh, difference uh, of potentials between, we create a difference of potential between the inside and the outside of the cell. So uh, the, the potential at the membrane is a difference uh, of uh, two equations, uh, two uh, algebraic quantities, phi A and phi external out. And these uh, functions are of, in fact, the potential inside the cell and the potential outside the cell. Then you have the current, the ion current, which is passive ionic current, normal, which writes uh, G for gate and difference uh, uh, between uh, the potential at the membrane and the potential that you apply. And then you have these equations uh, in red, which uh, uh, try to modelize the current of electroporation. So the functions phi A and phi uh, A are just harmonic uh, functions. So the, the, they modelize the, 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 the potential inside and outside the cell. And then you have an elliptic equations inside, outside the cell. At, and at the membrane, you have these relationships, this differential equation. So this model is phenomen phenomenological. That, that is to say that uh, it's um, somehow uh, um, empirical model with a lot of parameters. And a lot of, of these parameters are not uh, known and are dif um, difficult to measure experimentally. So this model, which tried to fit to the, the, bio, the, the cell biology, is unsatisfactory from this point of view. And uh, uh, later, uh, some authors like Pussihar and collaborators, or Perussel and uh, Poignard, and then Poignard studied the problem with Cavion, tried to, uh, to give a, a more qualitative model which is uh, a model for thin resistive layer, which modelize the, 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 uh, the wall between the inside and the outside, and some asymptotic analysis. And then they established a system of equation where you have still the equation of the potential inside and outside the cell. And then you have dynamic boundary condition or dynamic transmission condition on the um, on the the, the 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 it's not the wall but uh, um, the membrane separating the inside uh, and the outside and then you have uh, some uh, uh, initial conditions and boundary conditions so you have this uh, model which is an evolution equation but as you can see it couples something which is parabolic with something which is uh, uh, an elliptic uh, PDE. So we think, and I will show you that uh, within the G gradient system, we can study this uh, uh, kind of systems in a, a rather um, abstract form. So here gamma, the, the, the membrane is a smooth manifold and we can assume that uh, the inside and outside the cell are open sets with the given regularity. So we have a lot of uh, flexibility in the hypothesis. Uh, I just put the, the minimal hypothesis uh, in order to, to, to write and to justify the equations which are uh, uh, in uh, the system one. 
So now we want to study uh, this uh, problem. The, we, we will look first for a variational formulation. So we take the space H1 of the union of omega i and omega a inside outside. And of course, as usual, uh, uh, V naught, which is uh, the subspace where you have a homogeneous uh, uh, Dirichlet boundary condition. Then the weak solution to one is a function in L2 in time, H1 in space, such that the jump is continuous in time in L2 in space, and which satisfy this variational equation in V. I define the energy uh, phi of U, which is just the energy associated to this uh, uh, equation. Namely, this equation is the Euler Lagrange, uh, uh, the Euler relation uh, uh, associated to the minimization problem of this energy. And I define the function G, which, is, which uh, goes from V into L2, so that my space for the abstract gradient system that I will look for will be L2 of gamma, H. Now we compute the G sub gradient in this particular case. So it's the, the, uh, the set of couples WF in L2 times L2, such that there exists U in H1 of the union of the two subdomains, satisfying the boundary conditions. And W is the jump of U at, at gamma. And for every V in H1, uh, you have this, uh, this uh, equality, which is just the Gato differential of the energy phi. Now we have uh, a lemma, which is uh, quite, uh, quite uh, straightforward. Uh, WF is in a subgradient dg uh, of phi and w is equal jump of u if and only if u is a solution is a weak solution to the stationary problem of one so this comes only from the definition of the g subgradient and the definition of the uh, the variational uh, uh, solution but this is the key uh, result to obtain the abstract form of the uh, G gradient system. So if phi is uh, C1, quasi-convex and quasi-coercive, which means that this energy shifted by omega, like in this uh, line, is uh, convex and uh, coercive, then you can prove that the, the G gradient of phi is maximal quasi-monotone on L2 uh, gamma. And then the problem one, which couples an elliptic equation and a parabolic equation on gamma is equivalent to an abstract gradient system on H, so in gamma, which takes this form. And from what I explained in the, the, slide, in the previous slides, once you have this form, you have already uh, all tools for a qualitative analysis of the system. So you have these two theorems. The first one gives you the existence of solution and regularity of solution of the G gradient system, which is the abstract one set on L2 of gamma. And the second theorem tell you that uh, uh, this, this, this is equivalent to have weak solutions for the initial problem given by the system one. So there is a, a little step to go from theorem one to theorem two, but it's uh, the, the, the difficult part of the work is just to prove the theorem one, which fit under the G gradient theory. Once you have this result, you, you can prove the theorem too, just by uh, playing with the shifted energy and by observing that uh, the G gradient of the sh shifted energy 
is in fact a shifted G gradient. So with this, you can prove uh, the existence and uniqueness of solution and obtain uh, the regularity, at least the, the, the usual regularity for such problems. So all the qualitative analysis take, takes only few lines to be established. And the main part of the work in this kind of system is to identify the existence of a G gradient structure. Once you have identified this structure, everything uh, goes uh, uh, follows uh, quite easily. Okay. Just see. Okay. Now, uh, with this uh, this theory, now we turn to the uh, discretization of the system and how to solve in concrete way the system. Uh, we we said. Uh, we, we choose the homogeneous um, uh, framework that is f is equal to zero just for uh, simplicity. And uh, of course, once you have a, a, a gradient system, one can try to discretize in time. Uh, like this is uh, an implicit discretization, an implicit Euler uh, equation. And you want to solve this. If you can solve this, Remember, for the problem one, it is set in uh, the entire domain. Let's say we are in R3. You are in R3, but this equation takes place in R2 because you are just on gamma. So you have a reduction of dimension. However, it's not uh, that easy because this uh, subdifferential is uh, computed by means of uh, an implicit energy. So another way to write this is to just uh, uh, use moro yusida approximation and you are looking for uh, Z at the, the time N plus one as argument of this implicit energy plus this regularization a la moro yusida And then you can hide this implicit energy by remarking that in fact, this and constrained optimization problem corresponds to a constrained optimization problem in the space V, where now you deal with phi. Okay. And you can go further by uh, just uh, write under the form for this uh, minimization uh, problem. So this is only one way to to solve the problem. It's not the only way, but uh, it's quite natural for gradient system to look for uh, this kind of, uh, of problems to solve. Now, observe that uh, when gamma is a smooth manifold without boundary, let's say a circle in a 2D uh, uh, configuration, then the abstract G gradient system is a pseudo differential evolution problem on gamma, which write, which which reads, u u dot plus uh, lambda u plus this nonlinearity equals zero. So you have an evolution problem on gamma, and the operator lambda is composed of directly to normal or Steklov Poincaré operators uh, in omega e and omega e. So you can in this particular case solve this uh, system by uh, solving, uh, by determining the, the, the Steklov-Poincaré um, map. But if gamma is not smooth or uh, have boundary, then this representation is quite difficult. And uh, the operator here should be localized at least near the tip points, and you don't have really an explicit uh, system to write. And then you have to solve in the way I showed in the last slide. Now, the, 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 the way that I, I showed in the last slide may be solved uh, in the following way. You have to solve uh, two problems in omega inside and omega outside. And you have to deal with this uh, the, discretization, the discretization of the evolution equation on gamma in two ways, 
either completely explicitly, which means that you decouple these two problems, or implicitly, uh, which means that you have to solve them sequentially. And this may have some uh, uh, importance uh, in the way you solve the problem. And then you update Z at uh, the instant N plus one, just by taking the jump between you in inside and you outside. So the algorithm is very easy to understand. Now, if you want to study this algorithm to prove convergence, it's uh, uh, not completely obvious, but uh, we have performed some numerical tests and we observed the convergence. So it should be true. And it should, there is probably a way to prove uh, the convergence. And uh, in particular case, if you linearize, and, uh, you linearize the condition on gamma and you set A, K to be this function of the jump and uh, B to be uh, this function, then formally you can rewrite the system of the other uh, of, of the previous slide as a transmission problem with uh, with a Robin, uh, uh, Robin boundary condition. And this algorithm, which is a particular case of the one I explained before is a slight generalization of a convergent Robin Schwartz algorithm studied by uh, Pierre-Louis Lyons in 88. So for this uh, approach, for example, we can prove the convergence of the algorithm. And as, as I said, for uh, efficiency, for numerical uh, computing uh, purpose, one can decouple uh, five and six, which might be solved in a parallel. So I, I will not speak about uh, exploiting uh, the exponential formula because as I tell you, if gamma is a smooth manifold, if you can reduce the problem to an evolution on gamma with more or less explicit uh, operators, then you can also solve uh, this way by the exponential formula and um, uh, let's say rational approximation of the exponential. So there are a lot of, approaches to to prove uh, to to perform the computations okay now i show you uh, some numerical experiences uh, the first one is the uh, we call this uh, slamming door that is to say that uh, the membrane is considered as a slamming door and this corresponds to this choice of the potential what we have uh, on the left is uh, the current uh, inside, and uh, in the, this annulus is the, the current outside. And when you fit together the two, you obtain this uh, type of solution. So you have a transition at uh, the membrane. The, the second example is uh, uh, taken from uh, the work of uh, Cavion and uh, Poignard, who used uh, uh, a sliding door by this uh, hyperbolic tangent as a, a gate law. And uh, for this example, you have still uh, uh, here the solution that we computed uh, with the FreeFem. So you have the solution inside, outside, and uh, when you fit together, you obtain the, the entire solution and you can observe this, uh, uh, this transition from inside, outside, in the place where the, resist uh, where the, the membrane uh, allow uh, current to, to pass. So we, this example is more for fun but not completely. This is the Cassini egg. Uh, it's also to, to experiment computations with uh, membrane which are uh, uh, less smooth than circles. So you have a kind of singularities which will take place at this cusp and here. And uh, still the computations give uh, quite uh, good results. And uh, the last, 
example is this uh, snail cell. I don't know if uh, biologists uh, agree with the, the existence of such cells, but uh, the idea was to uh, explore how things works with the different kind of singularities, expected singularities on the membrane. And the results uh, still, uh, still uh, works uh, uh, correctly. So now uh, to conclude uh, the, yeah, to conclude, uh, just I illustrate this G gradient uh, with the choice of, uh, uh, let's say more or less simple uh, degenerate, degenerate parabolic equation, but there are a lot of uh, possible generalization which fit under this abstract theory. For example, the choices of the non-linearity non S, one may choose S as a sum of two function, S0 plus S1, where the S1 is uh, globally Lipschitz and S0 is um, non-increasing or non monotonic uh, function. So in this case, uh, you don't have necessarily the ghetto differentiability of phi, but uh, the first definition of the G sub differential still apply and uh, all the theory uh, works well. You, you can replace the Laplacian inside by a nonlinear equation such as uh, P Laplacian diffusion. Uh, and you can play also with the geometry of, uh, of uh, gamma. Uh, otherwise, uh, um, um, uh, you, you can perturb uh, the problem as you want, uh, if you identify the G structure, the gradient, uh, the G gradient structure, then all these things uh, will work uh, correctly. Uh, second point is that this theory may also apply to a more delicate situations such as a perturbed gradient and G gradient system. For example, the B domain model, which is well known for um, uh, electric neural activities, where you have uh, still uh, equations which are uh, uh, um, parabolic and uh, elliptic, you couple these equations, you identify not completely a G gradient, but a perturbation of the G gradient. So if the perturbation is not uh, that important and that and does not destroy the gradient structure, then you can still apply all this uh, theory and uh, of course the numerics which follows. Uh, and in the, this field, there are a lot of uh, both theoretical and numerical analysis and new applications to, to be considered. So uh, I think I will stop here and thank you for your attention. Thank you, Zakaria, for this uh, talk. Uh, is there some questions? No questions? Perhaps one question for me. Okay. Uh, it, it is a general question. Uh, you have a, a Laplacian equation in each domain, which, uh, and you are an equation, in fact, set in, on on the on the boundary. Is it possible to use a bound, um, boundary element method, an integral equation, to reduce the problem to a problem set entirely on the boundary? Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I'm not specialist of boundary element method, but I think that it applies, um, particularly if uh, uh, the membrane is smooth and closed. Then you can uh, probably use this reduction because you have the gradient, uh, the G gradient on gamma, and then you can choose any way to, to discretize it, boundary element or uh, uh, something else. And in this case, it, it works. But if you don't have this uh, uh, explicit representation, it may be difficult. For example, to think of gamma, which is not smooth or which is uh, an open curve, then the tip points may be uh, critical. 
So maybe uh, you can, in, in some very particular cases, uh, find the singular uh, part of the solution and uh, try something like this uh, by, by uh, adding the singularities to, uh, to a, a solution obtained by a boundary element method. But um, I, it, it's possible uh, when you, you can reduce the problem completely to a problem on gamma, yeah. Thank you. Is there another question? Okay, I have uh, perhaps uh, another question. Uh, you, you, you give uh, the theorem that you announced uh, were, were given for the continuous problem for the subgradient. Yeah. Uh, okay, and uh, does the did the result is available? Also for the discontinuous problem, do you have the same result for this continuous problem? Yeah, yeah. If you discretize by preserving this gradient st structure, then you you are completely in the uh, in a similar setting than in the standard gradient theory. So okay. you can use all the tools for discretization. What I explained uh, about, um, uh, for example, if you choose a, 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 a discretization in time, then you have the tools uh, uh, that you have for classical gradient systems, which work, which give you under some stability uh, and consistency uh, properties, give you convergence, give you estimate, etc. Yeah. So you have a, a full analogy in the discrete case. Okay. The fact that you have G gradient uh, uh, enforce this, this uh, gradient framework. Okay, then by discretization, you mean just the discretization in time, not in space? Both, it, it depends. For example, uh, if you see this, uh, this uh, uh, problems five and six, mm -hmm. and you want to, to study the conversions and the things like this. Uh, as it is, it's difficult because the non-linearity non is um, uh, maybe uh, uh, difficult to handle. But if you approximate this equation, as I, I explained here, then mm -hmm. you can prove the convergence of the algorithm. And you can even have a rate of convergence by using more or less the same arguments used by uh, Lyons in 88. So. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, is there uh, other questions, please? Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, Zakaria, perhaps uh, everybody want to follow the, the football the match. match. <laughs> Morocco, I, I know it's your favorite team. And <laughs> then we can hope uh, the win to, <laughs> to Morocco. Thank you everybody Thank you. to follow this, uh, this new seminar. And uh, I hope to see you again uh, in new conferences. Thank you, Zakaria, to, for accepting our invitation. Thank, yeah, thank you, you Nabil, and thank you all for your uh, talk, for being here. Thank you very much. Merci, merci, Zakaria. À bientôt, okay. merci à toi. À bientôt. Bon match. <laughs>